Become a better personal trainer by becoming a better man. Become a better man by applying knowledge from others who've walked across the fire and have a thing or two to say about it. Listen to Joe as he delves into some of the greatest minds of the best coaches in the world who bring inspiring stories and powerful insights to share about the human condition. Hear how the fitness industry goes only muscle deep and how a new breed of trainers are using emotional and mindset hacks to improve as men, evolve their game, and make the competition irrelevant. Trigger your pathway to greater fulfillment. With us, stand in the face of fitness. Welcome to the Fit Man Collective. Hey, my name is Joe Hanny, and I'm your host and founder of the Fit Man Collective Podcast Show. As always, thank you for being here. As you know by now, this show is about becoming a better personal trainer, about becoming a better man, a fit man. And I continue with this new series of freedom by interviewing the one and only Tim McCavitt of the Sedona Method. He's been practicing and teaching the Sedona Method since 1978. And with this vast amount of experience in helping people use this natural yet simple tool to enhance their lives, he's here today to share this insight and wisdom. The Sedona Method, as featured by The Secret, is a powerful yet practical technique that can help you release on any unwanted emotion. Instantly, that is. And it manifests whatever it is that you want in life. Learning to use this tool will allow you to... 1. Have more fulfilled relationships 2. Build financial security 3. Develop a satisfying career 4. Overcome bad habits 5. Help your clients lose weight and have good health Today I remind you of how your life comes before anything else in life That, my friend, is how we have and create freedom Hello Tim, welcome to the podcast show Uh, Just for the audience, would you mind just um, explaining a bit about yourself and how it came about that you kind of know so much about this Sedona method? Sure, absolutely, Joe. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm Tim, Tim McCavitt. Um, I've been uh, teaching the uh, Sedona method with my wife, uh, Enrica James, for the last uh, 10 years or so um, uh, as Sedona releasing worldwide. But it's been in my life, actually, since 1978. Um, first found out about it in New York City. And it has been uh, just an incredible journey. Um, it's been a pleasure to have this um, amazing uh, natural tool to just enhance um, every area of my life um, as I've gone through, um, you know, uh, adulthood, you know, young adulthood, I suppose, uh, middle age. Um, I'm in my 60s now. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel that uh, that way. Um, been able to uh, transgress uh, through. Um, a loss of parents and, uh, and loved ones, uh, been able to make transitions from um, successful careers in um, a variety of, uh, of avenues, actually, um, film and uh, uh, TV uh, acting, uh, production, um, real estate investment and development. And then now, uh, just in the last 10 years, we really decided to just do what we really love and what we know very well um, is this uh, teaching the Sedona method around the world. So it's, uh, it's just a pleasure that you can invited me to share what I know and um, tell some people about it. No, and it's actually a pleasure to have you on the show, Tim, and obviously studying and reading the book first and foremost, uh, which then right. made me more curious about uh, the Sedona method and, and learning about it in a more in more in depth, should I say, uh, mm-hmm. which then uh, brought me to, to meeting both yourself and Amika in, in London. Um, right. And I, a bit like yourself, um, received tremendous value from it and continue to do so. And it's something that we'll go into today in terms of how easy it is to uh, implement into your life on a day-to-day basis and continue to reap the reward, should we say, from it. And just for those that are new to the Sedona Method, Tim, would you mind just giving them a brief introductory to, to what it is? Sure, sure. First, I'll start with just... Just telling you what it isn't. <laughs> it's, it's not a philosophy. It's not a dogma. It's not a new belief system. It's not a, a set of rules and regulations. And it has nothing to do with anything 
other than tapping into our natural ability, our innate natural ability that we all have as human beings to, to let go uh, or release any unwanted uh, negative feeling or thought. So do it yourself, self-help mm -hmm. or technique. But the more you do it, like anything else, the, the greater the, the results. And it is, it is not an intellectual process. So even though read the book or, or maybe page through it or whatever, Joe, uh, it, it's, not a, it's, it's not an intellectual process. It's how we actually familiarize ourselves with it. Just having the, recognizing that we have the ability to, uh, to let go. I mean, we did it as little children, you know, yes. very readily. We did it and um, it was very, uh, I mean, it was just second nature. But we, as we got to around, I don't know, two and a half, three years old, you start to get trained out of it. Um, but as, as babes and uh, up to age two, I mean, feelings would just bubble up and out. People that are watching, if, you're, if you've been around children or if you have kids, young ones, you, you've watched them do that. I mean, I, I never met a two-year-old that held a grudge, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they don't hold on. So it's really, it's trained behavior, this holding on. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting back in touch with this ability that we have to let go. Now, yes, there are, you know, guidelines and everything, but it's in itself, the power of the Sedona method is in its simplicity. That's really what uh, attracted me to it, it to me. And, and, and again, the fact that it's something I can do myself. I, I don't need to plug into a, a, a teacher or a guru or, um, you know, uh, what have you to, to actually do this, use it, and, and have it benefit in every area of my life exponentially. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree. The, this, what attracted me to it was the simplicity of it. And going back to the time when I was reading the book and recently revisited the book, uh, right. I love the, the idea of how it asks you questions. You more, or less to, you more or less have to be involved in the book as you read it. It's not kind of passive reading. You have to... Right. Uh, it, it asks you to ask you certain questions in a certain way uh, and then it's up to yourself to partake in that, take part. Uh, and that's what I love about it so much. Um, and I believe the simplicity side of it and the do it yourself theme is, I believe, what makes it so different to many other self-help improvement technique courses out there. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I was lucky. You know, I found out about it in 1978 when I was 27 years old and it was like, and it, was, it came at a time in my life when I literally, I asked for it. Things were going very well, even though I had a career as an actor in New York and I was married. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that just kicked up and I had no, no tools whatsoever. I was not prepared to deal with the, the emotions that were coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I essentially asked for it, just said, God, send me something because I don't know. I'm pretty confused. That afternoon, somebody came up to me, you know, in a coffee shop, a guy I knew, and he told me a little bit about this thing. <laughs> and, and then I went, and then, yes, very. And then I went to a meeting that night and um, just met some people and um, met the founder, Lester Levinson, who I was able to spend time with and around and was not only a, a, a friend, um, mentor, but a, a friend and, and, and just rec just the recognition, yes, that um, it's something that uh, that you can do. I mean, I can equate it to, um, you know, how did we learn how to ride a bike? Did did you read a, a, a manual or a book, a little pamphlet about how to ride a bike as a kid? No. No, no. no, no, none of us did. We just decided one day, I'm going to get on the bike. We got on it. And I don't know about you, but, I mean, I crashed a lot of times. In fact, I had to have training wheels for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Stabilizing, and, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and and then of course you know you're 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 on it and you're practicing and you're doing it and then after a while you know look ma no hands and and, and here you are you know um, now you're not going to go ahead and, and uh, enter the Tour de France right away <laughs> but but you could definitely say I can ride a bike and that that ability never leaves you so too with this so it's like um, well I, I, it's funny you know the, if the majority of the audience listening is. Uh, personal trainer or into training and fitness, it's like not only discovering that you have a muscle that's, that's at, atrophied, because that's really what it is. I mean, we got this. So then just getting to be more comfortable with using it yeah. on, a, on a moment to moment basis. So let's, let's spend um, some time now, Joe, rather than, you know, we've talked a little bit about it. Let's just do it. You up for that? Yeah, certainly. Let's go. I'm all for that. Okay. Great. But what I wanted to do was peel off a t-shirt or a sweatshirt that I had on because I'm, I'm warming up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> which which is funny. That's one thing that does you do you do um, as you're letting go. Um, you'll notice you'll notice some amazing things that'll happen to the body mind because it's all you know it's it's, it's tied in together. Um, and one of the things is um, it's just an increased flow of energy. And of course, how that equates to you know fitness. I mean, how important it is to have energy, mm-hmm. blood, oxygen, everything flowing, working, working well, in support of the body. So, um, what I wanted to do was just just and I, I know you've done this before, but it's always great to just do it again. And this is something that everybody who's listening can actually follow along with um, and get an, get really. This is just um, an example of what letting go is and how easy it is. So if you've got a pen or a pencil or something that, you know, is close by that you'd be willing to basically just drop without giving it a second thought. If you've got that, could you just, just grab it for a moment? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. And I just hold that, that object in, in front of you and, and really just grip it tightly. Give it a good squeeze. And now let's just pretend that this is one of your un- limited feelings, one of your unwanted negative feelings and that, that that your hand or represents your gut or your consciousness now as you're squeezing it you that actually feels kind of familiar doesn't it mm-hmm. yes that's, that's, and that's that's really what we do uh with our feelings it feels familiar and uncomfortable so just for a moment just ease up <laughs> i mean that even that feels better doesn't it when you just kind of ease up and and just still cradle it in your hand mm-hmm. But that's exactly what we do um, with our feelings. Now, just open your hand for a moment and, and roll the object around on, on the palm of your hand, right? So it says it's, yeah, as you can see, the pen is not attached to your hand, is it? No, not at all. Right. So the same is true with our feelings. Your feelings you know, are, are as attached to you as this object is attached to your hand. It's not. But what we do is we hold on to our feeling. We actually contract around them as to believe that it's attached to your hand. We actually hold on and forget that we're holding on to them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's such a habit. And it's even in our language. It's like, you know, when we feel angry or sad, what do we say, typically? I'm sad. Yeah, I, I'm sad. R- rather than, than I feel sad or I'm angry, when we say I'm angry, you know, or rather than I feel angry, we actually, without realizing, we're misidentifying that we are a feeling. Mm-hmm. So, and then oftentimes we believe that a feeling is actually holding on to us, <laughs> which, I mean, this is not true. We're always able to let go and, and just don't know it. So, so now just turn that, turn that object around in your hand and actually have fist up and, and just, just decide now. Just just decide to let the object go. Just decide to drop it. Yeah, I could hear it hit the desk or the floor. So so what happened? We just let go. Yeah, you just you just let the object go. And now was that was that difficult? No, just a simple choice. <laughs> yes, simple choice. And that's exactly what we mean when we say let go or release. You can do the same thing with any emotion. Just choose or decide to drop it. To let it go, mm-hmm. release. Yeah, that's interesting, Tim. And obviously, I've done this before, and it might be the first time for the audience to to experience this. Would you mm-hmm. mind just briefly touching on what we may have become attached to when you talk about feelings or emotions or even the the four wants? Um, yes. Well, you know what we're what we're initially attached to, uh, Joe, is a tendency to hold on. Mm-hmm. We hold on, you know, um, and, and, and oftentimes you, know, like you, you may be aware of there may be some, a tightness or constric, constrac, uh, contraction or constriction, you know, in your solar plexus or in your chest or in your throat or in your head. Those are spots of, you know, where we, where we hold on. But what we're holding on to is, is beliefs or, 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 or emotions, feelings. It, it, it gets to the point, though, um, over, as we get older, as we get more and more just habituated to holding on, we actually lose touch sometimes in actually how we're feeling. And we yeah. live kind of like just neck up. Now, it, an interesting thing is you can still release when you're just living, you know, like from the neck up. But it's just helpful when you're, when you're releasing or letting go to just be a little more um, aware of how you're feeling. 
Mm-hmm. So what you're, that's what you're feeling. Uh, there's a whole, you know, um, range of emotions. The, there's a, uh, it's outlined in the book, but it's, the, our, our, our emotions, I guess, could be distilled down to, and our emotions, of course, would be the lower feelings, like, for example, apathy, which is you can't get much lower than that. And there's a lot of synonyms of what apathy is all about. There's grief, which is a little higher. Um, apathy is pretty much deadness. Uh, grief is, of course, you know, me. Um, there's fear, which is a little bit higher, but it's still a, you know, a low uh, a negative energy. There's lust, which is basically um, a little fear packing up. That's, you know, help me. I'm afraid. Yeah. Help me. Lust as I want it. I want it. I want it, but I can't have it. I want it, but I can't have it. I suppose for the trainer that's listening, uh, if they could mm-hmm. think of a, a client in this situation, what you've just mentioned is mm-hmm. possibly what's affecting those clients. The lust. To, yes. Or the, yes. The I am they've become their fat, they've become their overweight, right? The overweight challenge they have, they've become that, they've identified themselves as overweight rather than a feeling of overweight, should we say. Yes, and it's, it all boils down to, to feelings. Interpreted, there, there may be a, a, whole, a whole plethora of, of, of thoughts, but the feelings themselves, the apathy, grief, the fear, the love, pride, those are all the lower energies. Then you get into courage acceptance and peace or the higher energies those are all actually distilled down to three or four leaders that are actually which motivate or um, propel our our actions there's wanting control the wanting approval the wanting security or safety or wanting to survive as a body those are all basically the same and or wanting to be separate wanting to be one and they all have a feel to them so all of our thoughts are distilled down to these wants, these four master programs, if you will. Just looking at the mind as if it were a computer. And these, these things are all running. Most of them are running, of course, in the subconscious. So what the method does, it allows you to consciously be aware, you know, just be aware of what I'm feeling now, in this now, in the moment, now. And letting go of that. And the subconscious is actually attached to the present. So it doesn't mean you have to muck around in the past. Things may come up, pictures and images and thoughts, fine. But it's all past. But of course, what you, the only time you can do anything about the past is in the present. So um, what, yes, just dovetailing it back to client-trainer relationship. Yes, for the, cl- for the, re- for the trainer to have the, um, the ability to let go, two things happen. It actually gives him an opportunity, him or her, an opportunity to, to just be more comfortable within her, himself. And when you're comfortable within yourself, who you are comes through, mm-hmm. not who you think you are. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I kind of leads on to a question I think. Yeah. It's uh, around how do we usually escape these emotions then? Uh, like, okay, yes. From, so, from, a, from a trainer, so, we escape possibly by uh, turning our attention to the gym. Right. Yes. Yes. Well, that's not. It's not just um, uh, <laughs> exclusive to trainers. It's the yeah. entire world. The entire world. What they do. What, what we do. Uh, you know, we were trained to escape our feelings, to um, uh, suppress our feelings, and just think of. Yes. I mean, absolutely. Um, training, going to the gym, is one is one way to actually move away from your feelings. Um, if it if it's done. Um, just as an obsession, as a compulsion, or what have you. Anything that we do, um, look, eating, listening to music, sex, uh, drinking, uh, exercise of any kind, if it's done to actually move away from a feeling or escape a feeling or suppress a feeling, and that is pretty much uh, what's done across the board. But once you're conscious of that and you have the, the ability and you recognize that you have the ability to let go of the motivator. So, for example, uh, as a trainer, Somebody comes to you and they're overweight. It would be helpful, yes, for you to have the method so that you're, you can just allow them to be exactly as they are. I mean, we, you know, we, we pick up um, on how we feel. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, a, a good example, yeah, as I say, dogs or chickens know how, how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, but people sometimes know the lips are flapping, we're talking away, but we're actually communicating, connecting on a, on a feeling level. 
So as if you're more relaxed within, if you're more um, basically just quiet within, uh, whatever it is that you're saying, whatever you're imparting, whether it's as a, a trainer or as a as a parent or boyfriend, what girlfriend, whatever, um, it's 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 better received if you yourself are, are more relaxed. Because what happens? You, you mentioned escaping. This is what we do with our feelings. We escape or we suppress the feelings. We push them down. That's what we're very good at too. Just actually push them down. And that's and been we, going on for many years in some yes. cases, right? As you said, yes. it could be going on from the ages of two. Yes, yes, yes. And, and we will um, we'll express them on occasion. Now, expressing the feelings that's not that socially acceptable, is it? I mean, yeah. when we do, it's usually we, we've suppressed, we've suppressed, we've suppressed, and then finally something happens and you just blow and, and you feel terrible. Um, you know, the whole, the whole situation is really just kind of out of whack. So the, so the natural alternative to those um, habits of suppressing, escaping, or, of, or expressing is, is letting go. And, and what happens when you do that? You just allow the, the emotions to just spontaneously release. When you just simply, when you, when you welcome, this is just another uh, aspect of, of letting go. It's just simply welcoming or allowing what is to be. Whatever feeling is here right now, just to be here. And, and when that happens, uh, the body actually relaxes naturally and, and the mind becomes quiet. And then if there's, if there is action that needs to be done, it's more um, spontaneous as well. So, I mean, I, 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 we could just use, just use the whole, um, I guess kind of look at, um, well, look at the world these days and we can tie this into, um, I guess, the idea that we inwardly, and I think you probably have a sense of this, Joe, of how, how there's contraction and expansion. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? I mean, that's a, that's a premise of, of, of building muscle, right? The whole function of, uh, of the lungs and, and the body. But the world in itself uh, is a, in a constant cycle of uh, flowing between contraction and expansion. But like most of us are, are so... Uh, I guess we're, we're in resistance to, and it can be deep resistance to this natural flow. Uh, and, we, and again, uh, that we've spoke about already, it, we, we're possibly very unaware of the resistance going on. And yes, what I took also, which really was um, an eye opener for me is sometimes the resistance of not wanting is in focus and it actually brings you towards it, even though you're trying to escape it, if that makes sense. You probably oh, yes. do it better, word it better than what I did then. But. Yes, well, it, it, it's funny. It doesn't make sense, but that's what happens. Because what, because, <laughs> because what, we're, because what we're doing, the mind, the mind creates just by pictures, right? Whatever you're picturing, whatever you're holding in mind, that's what you're getting. Now, and, and if it's, if it's conjoined to a feeling, a feeling of resistance or a feeling of not wanting, I mean, here, check this out. Can you not think of a white elephant? Already. Yes. Right? Yes. So, so it, it, using your example of not wanting to be like somebody, <laughs> you know, for, for whatever reason, there's, yes, there's a resistance there towards that person. But what, actually what you're holding in mind is being that like that person because, because the mind doesn't equate, cannot, cannot equate to uh, not, or it, it just sees the picture, whatever it is. So that's why it's helpful, uh, to, you know, to hold in mind what you want as opposed to what you don't want. And what the, the method allows you to do is just, is just that by letting go of the, of the motivators, the, the, um, the reactivity, the resistance, but just let's let's just get back to this contraction and expansion that I was talking about, and we can do a simple uh, a release along those lines. Okay. Yes. With me, with it. Yeah. Oh, okay, and then and it'll it'll maybe elucidate a little bit. It'll, uh, it'll illuminate what uh, what we're just talking about. But the whole idea of um, 
that we have this ability, you know, to just within ourselves, just to welcome, um, welcome a feeling. Now, a good synonyms, like right now in this moment, just take a moment and just check as you just sit here. And just notice, notice how you feel. Just notice what's here. Now, there may be some thoughts in the mind. You're aware of that, you're aware of the heart beating a little bit, but just check. Go a little, a little lower, a little deeper, and just in your solar plexus or maybe your chest. Just notice if there's any feeling there. Now, you don't have to label it because it may just be a sensation. It may just be a tightness. It may be a contraction. So just to simply welcome that. A good synonym, like I say, for, for welcoming, there's many synonyms, but one of them is notice or allow or acknowledge or just let it be. So in, in this moment, could you just simply welcome whatever contraction you're experiencing in your body mind? Just allow it to be here for a moment. If there's any little sense of tightness or constriction or contraction. And then could you let it go as best you can? Now could you welcome any sense of expansion and let that go too? Could you just simply let go? And so here. Able to drop the pen earlier? You can. You know you can. So could you just simply let it go? And then could you welcome whatever expansion you're experiencing? Could you just simply welcome it? Just allow it to be here. And then could you let it go? Again, could you welcome any sense of contraction in your body mind? Could you just simply welcome it? And could you let it go? Could you allow yourself to welcome expansion? Just simply allow it to be here. That sense of expansion. And could you just simply decide to let it go? And then again, could you welcome or simply allow yourself to welcome contraction. Could you welcome it? And then could you let it go? Could you allow yourself to welcome expansion? And then could you let that go? And then in this moment, just as best you can, could you simply welcome that which is present to, yet beyond expansion and contraction? It's a little bit of a stretch, but just as best you can. Could you just simply welcome that which is present to, yet beyond expansion and contraction? And then just simply rest as that, which is always here, always now. So you can just, just keep going back and forth uh, between these questions until you feel the, the conflict or tension between both to simply dissolve. Yeah, and I think by just bringing it into, as you said, into your awareness, it's already started to dissolve, right? And yeah, it, yes. I can even feel uh, just facial expressions of, of, of letting go, whatever it is I was thinking about, and just the, the general smile that comes to your face, and you just feel lighter, and you feel like there's the weight off your shoulder already. And that's the profound thing about this, how simple it is in terms of the questions that are being asked, because they, I purposely asked to, to, to allow you to go inwardly, aren't they? To yes, exactly. Inwardly. Yes, yes. It, it really is um, what we're doing. We're using the mind to actually undo the, the contents of the mind that are unhelpful, negative, limit, mm -hmm. limitations. Yeah. yeah there's, a whole, there's a whole, there's tons of it. But yes, yeah, so, and, 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 and we're actually um, utilizing that higher aspect of mind, the, the ability to discern or discriminate, you know, to see things clearly. So it's not like it's, you know, like the mind is the enemy. It's not. But what we're doing, yes, as you said, you know, in terms of just focusing in awareness, bringing awareness to it. When you bring awareness to it, and, and this is what we just did too, uh, Joe, and everyone else listening, was a good example of what's uh, called a holistic release. It's just recognizing, and it's based on the premise that everything that we experience in life, whether it's real or imagined, mm 
arises in pairs of opposites. Now, in this case, we just we focused on contraction and expansion, but there's there's good, bad, you know, uh, scarcity, abundance, hot, cold, yeah, you name it. Um, but they all they exist as pairs of, of opposites, uh, polarities, duality. And what we typically do is we'll hold what was considered um, <laughs> the bad one, <laughs> if you will, or the undesirable part away and hold on, hold close or hold on to the more desirable one. But what happens when we're doing this, bring, when we actually bring them both up into consciousness at the same time, what they do is they dissolve one another and you're left with more space or spacious, spaciousness in which and upon which they're appearing. You're actually left with more of a sense of awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I like before you we went into that releasing, holistic releasing, how it, this is how I summarized it is if the trainer ourselves got cleaned, uh, if we let go of our own yeah. stuff, it's yeah. only to come across a whole lot more forthcoming to the client. This could be a lot more comfortable environment, should we say. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, you mentioned it previously, you said you went asking for this kind of method, this technique, or whatever, you went asking for it. And I've asked you this question before off record, um, and I know you came up with a very good answer, that's why I'm intrigued for the audience to hear your answer, is for them to do that, for them then to be able to recognize that they're yeah. clients. That is, I, I'm saying this because being in the industry for, for so long myself, and seeing what's, where the industry's going in terms of the focus is, is purely on learning more about exercise or, or, or diet strategies, none of the mindset stuff or influence people to change in a much more efficient, better way. Um, so I can see this being a massive or major part in helping that client who may have been overweight for 20, 30 years and no diet or exercise strategies really having an effect on that lady. So it's obviously coming down to something like this. So how does a trainer identify, if that's the right word, and then how do they then kind of identify, identify this within their client to help their client understand that I don't think yes. right or exercise is going to be the be all and end all of you achieving what it is that they, again, want, they want. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, that's a great question, Joe, because uh, you know, what brings us to anything? Um, you know, we're, we're, um, everyone is looking for the same thing. This is what, Lester Levinson shared with me and millions of other people. Well, maybe not millions, but lots of other people. And hopefully millions will hear uh, about him at some point in time. But we're all looking for the same thing. It's happiness. Yeah. We, we're, we're all, that's, that's what we're looking for. Now, unfortunately, we're looking for it in the wrong place or places. Yeah. We're looking for it um, outside of ourselves. We're looking for it in in relationship or achievement or money or, or sex or, you know, recognition or fame or, you know, you name it. But it's always outward. It's, it's always, a, there's, it's based on this belief that love, if you will, or approval is outside of myself. So that's where we look. And of course, we always come up, you know, I mean, look at the most successful people that you can think about, whether they're celebrities, you know, academics, actors, millionaires, politicians, et cetera, et cetera. Most of them, if not all of them, are, are, are not happy, despite their achievements and their accomplishments, because they've been looking for happiness in the wrong place now. So that just brings it back to your question. What prompts somebody to actually seek or, well, to seek something like the Sedona Method, or if they're fortunate enough fortunate enough to actually discover it. Just a, I mean, I, I, a real sincere, heartfelt desire to get, to get the answer for themselves to, to recognize. I mean, they recognize on, on, on some level, sometimes it's a very obvious level that they have been looking in the wrong place. Once they discover that the, they, they have this ability to let go. And this is exactly what actually Lester, when I first met him, said to me, he said, you are a, an unlimited loving being, and that is just covered over. This is all you need to pluck out the covering. Mm -hmm. And I, I just went, wow, 
I mean, sign me up. You know? <laughs> and, and, and then I knew the rest of it was up to me, which was great. Um, and, and indeed, that's that's what you discover. That's why I know what you've been discovering, and that's what lots of lots of people are, are discovering is that, yeah, um, our our inherent goodness, our inherent love, what we've all been looking for, our happiness comes from within. So just by letting go of what's covering it over, the negativity, the limitations, the belief that I am not enough. That's a, that's a big one. I mean, as a trainer, if somebody comes to you and, and, and you can see they're, they're overweight, typically, you know, um, there's a feeling there. There's a feeling that they have that you, you as a trainer have would have too. That, you know, and it's basically wherever we are in life, this, this belief that I'm not enough. Mm, yeah, I agree. Fuels this, um, or I need more. Um, and I had I had a session earlier today, a, a private one-on-one session, which we do um, with people around the world, thirty different countries or so. But he was a a, a, a collegiate athlete, a, a very good athlete, could have gone you know professional um, in football here in America, American football, not soccer. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was releasing now uh, today uh, disappointment over uh, and he's had the method and he's really benefited but he was releasing some disappointment in, in being passed over for a job um, a, a better job kind of a promotion I guess um, and, it, and it, it dawned on him as we as we just did the releasing we're just talking about performance in his whole life you know he said you know his whole life has been performance athletically academically uh, in, in, in the business I mean in terms he's in sales now sales and marketing and it's just i think everybody listening to this can relate to it so what he was able to do was just recognize and let go of some of this some of this behavior some of this this tendency to to to, to perform not it, it's a it, it's, it's a habit that actually that we've held on to believing that you know if i if i get this i mean he even said he said i'm just i'm just basically drowning in this feeling of i'm you know i, I need more and he's, you know, he's, he has a great job. He has a great family. I mean, it's just recognizing that at some point you just let go of the that, that and just decide mm. enough. I am an I am enough. So I mean, that that, that in itself is a is a great uh, a great recognition, a great um, exploration for anybody who's a trainer to let go of that within themselves, and then they can be, then be with somebody who's come to them, who's overweight, who, who's there saying, look, here I am, mm-hmm. you know, can you help me? Yeah. And not that you even have to be, you know, coaching or releasing with someone. If you're a trainer and you have the Sedona method, it'd be great to have, you know, your, you know, your, your clients, your, your, your people letting go. But if, if, if they're not just you or yourself will have a, 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 a an effect on, on them, on their performance, because you're allowing them basically just to be as they are. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yes, um, and and then you 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 that's the platform. You accept them as they are. Yeah, I suppose you don't impose your wrong belief on them in that way. Uh, right. But you was never aware that they was wrong at the time. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, and that, something that I picked up on, which I know trainers will relate to a lot, even more so if they haven't done so already, is um, if a client comes to them that just say is overweight or unhealthy, they tend to tie down to unhealthy habits. I like the word habits that you brought up. And this mm-hmm. donor method, this method that we're talking about, can actually help undo bad habits, right? Um, or recognize that they're a habit of some sort, or they may have be it may be a resistant to something um i know from in one of the stories in the book it was to do one lady made or held on to a decision that she made 20 years prior <laughs> to to figuring out why she had gained weight for the last 20 years and it was based on a decision that she made against her husband for whatever reason uh, and yes that, um as a as, as a way of getting back at him should we say <laughs> um so in terms of Understanding that clients do have habits, but understand it on a whole deeper level. Right. But it could be something that they're probably they're not even aware of themselves. Um, so I suppose my question is, the the in your experience with this and working mm-hmm. with may have a bad habit, should we say? Um, so the Sedona method can have um, amazing results with that with people with habits, right? 
Yes, absolutely. And again, uh, Joe and everyone listening, you know, it's, it's these habits. Um, what the method allows you to do is focus in on and let go of the, the motivator, the motivators, the, the actual, whatever the um, tendency or habit it, that, that's operating, that's um, basically driving you to, um, to, to, to do that behavior, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we could just do a very simple release along those lines right now. Yeah, I was hoping that he was going to say that, because I think this would be quite powerful for the guys now. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just see for a second. Um, yeah, if you can, you can just, uh, just think of, um, of something about yourself, whether you see it as a, a habit or an addiction or a, a tendency. It's something that, that you're aware of, um, and it can be, you know, in, in any area of your life. Could, you know, maybe you have a, a habit of overeating, a habit of uh, making money and losing it, making money and not being able to save it, or a habit of uh, just attracting the opposite sex that's not to your liking, it, but every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same old, same old, different name, and uh, <laughs> but happy. But there's just to sell the same. So, and, and and again, whatever comes to mind, you know, you don't have to pick the most difficult one, but whatever comes to mind. So, just in this moment, and we're just going to keep this very simple. But in this moment, could you just simply welcome whatever's here, whatever, whatever's showing up, whatever pictures, whatever images. It's funny because this takes me back to one of the main reasons that I came. Uh -huh. the moon in the first place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So could you just welcome now any thoughts too? You know, those, those, those sounds that the mind makes when we're thinking about something comes up in the past. And then also to any feeling, any emotion that you're aware of. And it could just be a, a, a tightness. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, something that you can label fear or anxiety or whatever. So just simply welcome whatever's here, whatever's showing up. Yeah. And then as best you can, just for now, could you welcome any wanting to change that? Could you welcome any wanting it to be any different than it appears to have been? Welcome any wanting to control it or any resistance to it. And then as best you can, just in this moment, could you, could you just simply let go wanting to control it or change it could you are you capable of it remember if you drop the pen you can so would you let it go are you willing to and when could you just simply decide to do it now good so again just think of that same scenario that same habit or tendency and just welcome whatever else comes up. And it might be the same thing. That's fine. Just whatever comes up. Just allow it to be here for a moment. So could you just simply let, let it go? Could you? Would you let it go? And when? <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember, it's just a decision. It's a choice. Now, again, oh, and by the way, if, if the answer is no, <laughs> sometimes the answer might be no that's fine that's totally fine if that's true for you and the answer is no that's fine you may still just let go or if it is no would you like to change that no would you like to change that it's a no could you just let go of that feeling of wanting to change it see it's a fe there's a feeling there just to be aware of that feeling so again when you think of that of that situation or that tendency or that habit. If there's anything else coming up, could you just simply allow it to be here? Just welcome it. And then could you just simply decide to let it go? Could you? Would you? <laughs> and when? <laughs> and when? <laughs> what I love about this process is, and it still occurs today, is especially when you you mentioned about the part that it's okay to say no you don't want to release it and then just the question after that it kind of makes you giggle to yourself because it's as simple as do you want to continue to 
have what you've been having or would you be free of it kind of doesn't sense what you're saying um, yes it makes perfect sense to let go of it then um, yes i suppose just for those that are listening with with me uh, when we've mentioned the the wants and i think it from the top of my head it's control approval security and uh, separation right Right, separation one. Z, yeah. That's where control is coming into it of not wanting to let go of it, you know? Yes, yes, because, yeah, because there's this, there's this um, poorly wired belief that um, <laughs> wanting control equates to control. No, it's the feeling of wanting control. When you want, want equates to lack. And that's a great point because that was my next uh, yes. uh, point that I put down on my notes here. And, uh, and that want and that uh, place of lack, because I, I know with the clients, uh, with their trainers listening, upon sitting down with their client, probably possibly for the first time, their cli- their cli- the trainer is going to be asking a question that's going to ask for a response of mm-hmm. the client saying, I want to lose weight. And that's probably how the conversation really starts with every trainer client. So what yes. goals would you like to achieve, Tim? And yes. The response would naturally be, I want to lose weight, which from what we're discussing now could be the very thing that's holding them back from achieving or losing that weight. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, definitely. The, the beauty of, of, of what you do, that's what I love about the Sedona Method. I mean, and, and just in terms of an approach, right, right now we're talking about physical fitness and training to recognize that the overall holistic approach is 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 what i is how i live my life it's is recognizing that yes it's there's a wholeness in terms of um fitness that's emotional physical mental and spiritual so recognizing that and then knowing that since you have this ability to let go you're there then to not only impart what you know as a trainer from just from the physical aspect of how how things work and what 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 will uh, obviously assist them but how then to support that on a on a feeling level it's the feelings of it's the it's the feelings of i can see as you let go of the i can't or the i won't what you're left with inherently is a natural feeling of i can so that's what you're you know letting go so when somebody comes in and says i want to lose weight what their goal is is to have you know a, a slim fit um a, you know body yeah confident right? yes so you know it's just and it's, it's not positive thinking it's just letting go of what they're holding on to that's in opposition to that so when they go ahead and come in and say Here's my goal, and that's what Sedona Method. We'll we'll show you how to to, to state goals in a, in a, in such a way that you can then bring up with opposition. That's the purpose of goals. So when somebody comes in, uh, you know, I want to lose weight. What um, what that will bring up within them is is a ton of resistance. You know how to let that go. It'll bring up all the a whole gamut of um, thoughts and feelings that, like I said, are in opposition to achieving the goal. I can't. I'm not good enough. Um, it it takes too long. It's a lot of work. Um, it, I, I don't know. You know, there's just uh, self doubt. Um, uh, whatever whatever's there that's been feeding them, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to to you know to basically cause them at this point suddenly something. You know, they they decided they made a decision. Good for them. They're in courageousness. See, they got themselves there. They're in courageousness, and most people don't recognize that. So to point that out, you got yourself here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so in so doing, this will bring up what's in opposition to it. So yes, we're going to combine this training, you know, my expertise and stuff with your ability to let go. It's a beautiful win-win. It's a, it's, and now I want to just share a little something with you right now, and I don't know how long we got, Joe, but um, this this. I, I, it's just an email that uh, came from um, a friend of mine who's had the method for s- several years. She's been on a couple of our seminars. She's in uh, in Colorado, and she's a uh, of Pilates uh, instructor, teacher. 
uh, of, of 14 years. And this is what she says. Um, and I'm just going to read this. She says, the Sedona method has supported me in being a catalyst for my client's health and fitness evolution. Just as much or more as all the doing things of leading exercises. Releasing has kept me grounded in meeting my clients where they're at and helping them identify and take charge of achieving their own goals. And I'm thrilled to share my expertise and joy of, of learning with them. This keeps the sessions feeling mutual and collaborative as we, quote, grow together. As someone who's taught over 10,000 hours in the last 14 years as a Pilates instructor, releasing has helped me navigate through the draining waters of burnout and still find joy and inspiration from the people that I work with. I mean, that's, that says a ton. Oh, exactly, and I couldn't say it any better. Um, no, no. This this is Kim uh, in in Durango. She's just it's just a sweet. And this is and now and from a business perspective, because I asked her as well, just from a business perspective now. Um, and she adds this, so I just want to continue and then go from there. But she says, as a business owner of a Pilates studio for fourteen years, the Sedona method has been immensely supportive in becoming a more effective manager and business owner, letting go of the stickiness of attachment and aversion. These are things that we focus on with the Sedona Method, attachment and aversion. She's, I get freer and freer every time I release to do what is in service to the best and highest good of everyone, clients, staff, and me. This makes every business day an opportunity to support, to support myself in health and everyone around me, physically, mentally, and emotionally. An example of this is, is and then she adds, she says, an example of this through releasing, she said, I got clear that getting leadership and coaching training, actually a certification, would help her as a manager and a business owner. And those were two roles that she said I never really identified with when I got into the fitness industry as a teacher. And it just, it just happened, she said. So she says, now through releasing, I've been able to take responsibility for the roles I've, I've assumed and that had been previously resisting. <laughs> There's <laughs> resistance again. So, 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 so with training, combined with releasing, I am relaxing into the flow and experiencing how exciting it can be to support others in taking more responsibility and grow their own leadership in ways that is leading to more unscheduled time for me, more profits for the business, and a more satisfying place to work and work out for everyone. So... <laughs> There yeah, you go. That's a great, yeah. A great yeah. That's just the man to the Sedona method. And I'm second to that. Hence why we've got And just, just, <laughs> I could speak all day to you, Tim, and I'm sure we might need to do a part two to this. But Okay. Okay. Yeah. But just to kind of bring this to a wrap, um, uh -huh. I just have a few quick questions which I feel may be going on in the minds of the trainers. Okay. And that may, and they come around um, this question. How often, we've talked of releasing and, and asking these questions of ourselves, how often should we be releasing? Is it something that's ongoing? Is it, could it? Could, okay. You know, uh, I, I personally have got into the habit of doing it uh, as, well, as and when, when I feel that it needs. And I know the book and the, the course that I came on to, to, to yourselves in London helped me realize that. So yeah, the question is how often should one release? Okay, uh, great question. And this is what's happening moment to moment in my life, in your life, in everyone's life. Two things. We're either holding on or letting go. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you prefer to do? Let go, right? Okay. <laughs> so, as, yes, me too. So, as, so now the beauty of the Sedona Method is just equating it to how we learn how to ride the bike. We can get on, you know, when you're 90 years old, you can get on the bicycle and ride it. Yeah. But you haven't lost the ability at all. It's just, it, it's second nature. So it's not like asking these questions, for example. I, I don't have to run a, a litany of questions in my mind anymore. It just becomes, as you, as you just do it, as you, and this is part of the, the could you, would you win is the most basic question you can ask yourself. It's like, hey, you know, look, if this is new, then yes, we started out very easy. It actually becomes spontaneous. So after a while, you, you, you just be open to the possibility mm -hmm. of, of letting go yeah. without having to 
of ask any question of yourself, of just welcoming, welcoming, for example. We did some of that. It's really, it's, you, you, can wel- you can welcome in action. Inherent in welcoming is letting go, but you can do it in action. It's as if, you know, with the welcome or the letting go, we basically just kind of, was it a little bit of doing involved? We had a pen in our hands and we decided to drop it. We have a feeling and we decide to let it go. There's a little bit of doing there. But with welcoming, it's as if, just in terms of imagery, just to imagine having your hands in prayer in front of you. Mm-hmm. And then just opening, opening your hands, your palms, in a welcoming way outside. But do that in, inwardly. You do that inwardly. And, and what happens is nothing sticks if you're just welcoming. Welcoming what is. So to, to answer the question specifically, you can do it all the time. Because, and why not? Because you feel better. You're in the flow. Is it okay to be in the flow? <laughs> exactly. I think the more and more you do this and, and become present of the, the method itself, you're more conscious, you're more aware of it anyway. Yes, yes. And you notice things are a whole lot more clearer. Uh, yes. Again, it's that choice of or simple yes. as the choice of letting go of the pen, etc. And talking of that question of how often... Um, should be letting go. Um, I know you have many tools out there for mm-hmm. the public to get access to. And if you don't mind, Tim, would you mind just sharing how the guys listening to this podcast show could learn more about the Sedona Method um, yourself yes. and Rika, if you don't mind? Yes, 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 sure. Well, our, our website is Sedona Releasing Worldwide. That's www.sedonareleasingworldwide.com. We, we um, offer uh, and present uh, live events around the world. We'll, we'll be in Singapore uh, next year, Japan. It'll be our fourth year in Japan. Uh, we do them in, in the UK, uh, in London. That's where Joe met us. And uh, we'd love to see you again, Joe. Uh, or maybe in Singapore. Who knows? Cool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we do free support calls. Um, you can just go on to our website and opt in. Uh, for our mailing list on, on one of our pages there. Um, we have, uh, we came up with a, um, an app um, available as uh, Android version as well as on um, for iPhones, iPod and iPad. Uh, it's uh, called iRelease. Uh, it's, 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 it's a wonderful uh, app. Um, I, I know you have it and been using it. it, it the, um, the themes are all the things that we really um, you know, feel strongly about in life, relationship, um, addiction, stress, anxiety. Um, we have the beginning of the day release and the end of the day release. Uh, it's all um, very three to five minute releases. It's free, by the way. I didn't mention that, but <laughs> it's free. Um, the uh, the, the um, It's the Sedona Method I Release app. It's uh, a guided meditation to stress relief and increase energy instantly that's what it's called um so you can you know we invite you to avail yourself of that you'll just basically have to go on to our website and take you to uh, a link and then you can sign up and and, and get that uh, we do a support call every month um uh, we actually got one scheduled for uh, day after tomorrow um i've already put two people that way your way for that call as well actually oh good great mm-hmm. great and um we do it typically uh in an a.m. and p.m. So we catch people on different time zones around the world. And then we record it and send it out in the next day or so. So it's there um, in that library. Uh, actually, there is a library that we have on our website as well of some past uh, support calls that we've uh, recorded, um, as well as uh, all, well, for the last couple of years anyway, our uh, Websites could be found on our, our websites. Our support calls can be found on uh, SoundCloud. So mm-hmm. those are, those are ways. Uh, the Sedona Method book that you've mentioned, um, you can go on Amazon and get that. Um, and it's a it's a great uh, primer. Um, what we what we really invite you to do um, is continue um, to continue letting go. Um, it's, it's not a once and done thing, whether you read the book or go to a live seminar. Um, I've been to countless um, retreats either here in Sedona with uh, our, our friend uh, who was basically handed the mantle from Lester Hale Dwoskin, 
countless retreats over the years, um, countless uh, seminars that Enrique and I have have given. Um, the more you do it, the just the the better life becomes. So uh, and and have no fear <laughs> in terms of if you are a practicing Catholic or Christian, a Jew, a Sikh, uh, Muslim, uh, Hindu. Uh, Southern Baptist or whatever, it doesn't matter what your religious affiliation is. It will make you a better whatever you are because all we're doing is giving you, providing you with a way to actually access your own natural ability to let go of the negative emotions, uh, limitations that have been self-imposed. And when you do that, um, who you are, what you are shines through. And uh, it's, you know, this is... um, I guess, I don't know. Um, like I said, I've been fortunate. It's, it came to me when I was uh, a young guy, and uh, it's it made life um, just be one heck of a of a fun ride. It doesn't mean that stuff doesn't happen either, but when you have a way to let go of anything that gets kicked up, anything, you are in control. And that, that in itself, I think, is priceless. A feeling, a feeling of, I am safe, I am happy, I am complete. So, yeah, yeah. it's freedom and abundance uh, at large. Yes. And I speak highly of it. And yes. just to bring it to an end, Tim, I just have to say thank you for your attention. I appreciate your time. Um, I know that we would come back and forth to ensure that this is exactly how we wanted it. Uh, and I know the audience is going to take a great deal from this. Um, so thank you. Oh, oh, it's been my pleasure. And, you know, we just kind of just scratched the surface, but uh, <laughs> you know, there's enough here. There's, a, there's enough uh, meat. Um, if you're really interested and it's, it's piqued your interest, I just invite you to just please just check it out. Um, uh, if you're a meditator, uh, this is like a walking meditation so it's something you're going to do with your eyes open or your eyes closed i wouldn't i wouldn't do it while you're driving at least with your eyes closed yeah. but you can't do it while you're driving it's it just it's a um it's a wonderful tool and i i, I appreciate uh, the fact joe that you've um decided to share it uh, uh, within your uh within your professional circle and uh we'll just see how it goes out it's a, i'll just allow the rippling effect of letting go to um, continue around the globe. I mean, it's 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 needed these days, and there are uh, there's a, a wonderful power, a wonderful synergy that does take place when people um, are gathering are, are letting go. Um, it's very supportive of the whole planet. So um, there's a lot to be said about it, and a lot to be discovered for anyone that wants to um, to go in this direction. So thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome, Tim. Thank you. Okay. Once again, thank you for Tim for being on this Fitman Collective podcast show. You can find out more about Tim and the Sedona Method at www.sedonareleasingworldwide.com. I've personally found that from using the Sedona Method, it's helped me release on feelings of anger, frustration, and anxiety. It's why I continue to practice the method day in, day out. Now, if you have any questions about this show, then head over to the Fitman Collective Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Fitman Collective, where we'll be having deeper discussions about this show and many other episodes. Remember, this is about becoming a better personal trainer by becoming a better man. To get all the show notes and links, then head over to the Fitman Collective.com. Thank you for listening to the Fit Man Collective Podcast. This is your life. Don't settle for mediocre. Don't settle for average. Don't even settle for great. Beware the average man who attracts an average companion. Beware the great man who believes they've achieved everything and appears just a little too comfortable. Don't be them. Become the patient wolf. The Fit Man Collective is waiting for you. Know yourself. With us, reinvent yourself and your place in this world. Body, mind, health, relationships, 
career, money, all of it, and more. We can never be caught. We can never be categorized. The Fit Man Collective reinvents the future of the Fit Pro. The Fit Man makes his own fate. Join us at thefitmancollective.com.